divided by. Do Pixent helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Do Pixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Do Pixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. Hi, I'm Justin Long, and we're on the set of Goosebumps. So I'm going to show you the set. It's very spooky and exciting. So come along, entertainment tonight. Da -na 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 -na. Did you know we had a new correspondent? I did not know, but I mean, welcome. I mean, good job, family. Justin, exactly. Tune in tomorrow for that, everybody. Meanwhile, get ready to enter a world of I knew you were imagination. Do it. Happening now. It's been six days since the attack on Israel, and now the Jewish Federation of San Antonio is asking for your help. We'll tell you how you can make a difference for this community. From aspirin to toothpaste, the Family Dollar Store is announcing a massive recall of products. We'll have a complete list of what's being recalled and what you can do if you have these things in your home. And I'll be back to talk about how a cold front will affect our weekend weather and the latest eclipse forecast regarding cloud cover in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. The new war in Israel entering its sixth day and San Antonio's Jewish community is taking it personally. Yeah, today the Jewish Federation of San Antonio announcing a major campaign to raise $1 million to help citizens of Israel survive the violence and recover from the attacks this weekend. Camilla Juarez with how that million dollar goal could multiply into two million by a local man whose son is on the front lines. Ridden Rubin and Zippin Baryudin's son learned about the Hamas attack on Israel on Saturday. He immediately went on the attack too, signing on to fight in the new war. I don't want him to be hurt. I want him to come back home. While praying for his son's safety, Baryudin says he found a way to support his son right here in San Antonio by creating the Israel Crisis Fund. It's unbelievable the chaos that's going on there. And people ask me, what can I do? I say, well, this is what we can do. His promise to the Jewish Federation of San Antonio to help raise a million dollars is only a start. Bar Yudin's family foundation will match it, doubling the dollars to two million. The challenge will go directly into Israel with 100% of the money used to help the victims of the warfare with basic needs like clothing, toiletries, and tents, as well as sleeping bags, since so many have lost their homes in the bombing. To donate, visit the Jewish Federation of San Antonio website. But the Jewish community has said never again since World War II. We live every day with the statement, never again. And yet, it happened. We are now in a position of having to say never again a second time. You cannot imagine what that feels like. Kamalia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Now to the very latest from Israel and the Gaza Strip. The death toll from the fighting there now hitting 1,400 dead people. That includes both Israelis and Palestinians. And among the dead, 27 Americans with 14 still missing. A new unity government is now formed in Israel to restore confidence in the government there. This as Israeli forces continue their attacks along the Gaza Strip. The Israeli army saying that these retaliatory airstrikes on Hamas targets in Gaza are focused on killing Hamas leaders and fighters. On Saturday, men, women and children in the Jewish state were slaughtered by Hamas in their homes and on the streets. Meanwhile, in Gaza, residents are desperately searching for shelter as Israel's military blockade has left the Palestinian people without food, water or electricity. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel today, saying that he will visit with the leaders across the Middle East in the coming days. We'll continue pressing countries to help prevent the conflict from spreading and to use our leverage with Hamas to immediately and unconditionally release the hostages. The Pentagon says U.S. intelligence had no warning that Hamas was planning this attack, adding that the U.S. has never seen a gathering of Hezbollah militant troops on Israel's northern border. 
New at five, a man who initially tried to pass off his father's shooting death as a suicide will now spend 12 years behind bars for his murder. 42-year-old Jason Anthony Huron's sentence is the result of a plea deal. Back in May of 21, Huron told a 911 operator that his father, Anthony Huron, had killed himself. He later changed the story to the operator, admitting he was the one who pulled the trigger. Officers found the father dead in the living room of his home on Lyric Street on the southwest side. Huron pleaded guilty in court yesterday and got 12 years in prison. All right, this is a weird story. San Antonio police are looking for a driver who they say caused an accident with an 18 wheeler, jumped out of their car, leaving it in the middle of the road where another driver crashed into it. All of it happening about 2.30 this morning on I-10 West near 1604 and UTSA. Police tell us before running away, the driver got out of the Toyota Camry, was on the access road of I-10 West, got onto the interstate and crossed over the main lanes causing that accident with the big rig. They then took off running, leaving the car in the road where another driver ended up hitting it. That driver taken to the hospital to be checked out. Police say once they find that driver who ran away, they'll be charged with failure to stop and give information at least. If you do some shopping at the Family Dollar, there is a massive recall you should know about. Yeah, the dollar store recalling hundreds of products, including several, several popular medicines, even toothpaste. 12 Your Sides' Marilyn Moritz explains why in today's Recall Roundup. Family Dollar is recalling a slew of products, toothpaste to Tylenol. Various eye drops, antacids, vitamins, and more are off the shelves. Many over-the-counter meds and personal products were stored outside the labeled temperature requirements, according to the FDA. The products were sold between June 1st and October 4th. You can return them without a receipt and get your money back. We have the full lengthy list on our website. All models of one-wheel self-balancing electric skateboards are recalled after four deaths and several injuries, including paralysis and brain injuries. The 300,000 skateboards by Future Motion can stop balancing if the board's limits are exceeded and riders can crash. In three deaths, the riders were not wearing helmets. Some models are eligible for a firmware update. These air fryers can get too hot. Secura is recalling 6,400 air fryers after several either caught fire or smoked. These were sold on Amazon. Contact Secura. And parents, is this your baby's lovey? Little Sleepies is recalling nearly a half million sleepyhead loveys and bandana bibs because of a choking danger. The company is giving refunds. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Across America, five officers from a Minnesota drug task force taking bullets during this standoff in Glen Dorado Township. The officers were all injured, but they did survive. Local news reports indicate that the exchange of gunfire happened when the officers were executing a search warrant at the home. Eventually, the suspect was taken into custody. Those officers taken to the hospital. The Tampa Bay area reportedly struck by two tornadoes early this morning. One twister did extensive damage to a condo building in Dunedin, but a lot of destruction also left behind in other places. Damage spread across Citrus, Pinellas, Pasco counties. So far, there have been no reports of injuries. More than 6 million people across North and Central Florida under a tornado watch that lasted until earlier this afternoon. And a very scary situation unfolding near the TSA checkpoint at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in Atlanta yesterday. Witnesses there say a woman went on a stabbing spree and part of it was caught on camera. It happened last night. The woman with what was described as a good sized knife apparently stabbed a taxi driver outside the airport, then a police officer inside the security area. One witness says police were surrounding the woman when one officer tried to make a move from behind. She turned with the knife and allegedly stabbed the officer in the leg. The other officers rushed her and they were able to subdue her. Earlier, police say the woman stabbed a taxi driver just outside the airport before her confrontation with the officers. She's now facing four charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They broke into a casket. Authorities in Colorado investigating after body parts stolen from a cemetery near Denver. Sheriff's deputies say they discovered a private mausoleum and the casket inside severely damaged. Investigators say the casket pried open. Portions of the body that was inside were removed. 
Those buried inside that mausoleum lived and died in the early 1900s so far. Those remains have not been found. And oh, fooey, someone in California won the second largest jackpot in U.S. history. There was a single winning ticket matching all six numbers for the $1.7 billion grand prize in last night's drawing. That ticket was sold in Fraser Park, California. The lucky winner will have the option of a cash payout worth $774 million or a one-time payment, followed by 29 yearly payments that will increase by 5% every year. It took the Powerball 36 drawings for someone to finally win the prize. Are you ready? A lot of work underway to make this year's Dia de los Huertos Fest just as beautiful as last year, the year before that, the year before that. There'll be flowers, at least 80 altars from all over San Antonio, live performances, local art vendors. The Huertos Fest, two days of remembrances and celebrations at Hemisphere Park. And KSAT is going to be there both of those days. Muertos Fest, Saturday, October 28th, Sunday, October 29th. If you can't make it to Hemisphere Park, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT. We're going to bring you a live special November 1st at 8 p.m. And for everything related to this year's Dia de los Muertos Fest and celebrations in and around San Antonio, scan this QR code on your screen for dates, times, and places. Sky watchers and scientists alike, they're going to be looking up in the sky and they're going to be wearing some form of protective fashion this Saturday as the countdown to the annular solar eclipse draws down. There are several watching events in and around San Antonio as well as in surrounding areas. The eclipse begins at 1023 a.m. It ends at 133 p.m. As Saturday approaches, those special certified solar viewers may be harder to come by. But remember, whatever you do, don't look directly at the eclipse with your naked eye. You could damage your vision permanently. And several stores are selling those ISO certified solar viewers. Some organizations and agencies like the San Antonio Library and the zoo are offering those uh, glasses free if you take part in their special eclipse events. But if you want to watch the annular eclipse from your sofa, KSAT 12 is your eclipse authority station. We have a team coverage of the big event on air and on our news and on our weather apps. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now and access everything you need to know so you and your family can watch the eclipse safely. We have a lot of information on there, including frequently asked questions, how to make a pinhole projector, safe ways to view the eclipse directly and indirectly, such as the pinhole projector, even just using a colander, let the sun shine in through it. The shadows in the holes you'll see on the ground, you'll see the effects of the eclipse. A lot of, a lot of information there. 85 degrees right now, the sky finally cleared out a bit. Temperatures boosted well into the 80s. Dew point is 67, so we're feeling that humidity. Near 90 along the Rio Grande, 89 in Warren's backyard in Del Rio, but 79 Leon Springs, 80 Bulverde, Lavernia up to 88. Meanwhile, 79 in Micah. You can see where some of the clouds have really lingered around. Humid this evening, and the low clouds will fill back in with some patchy fog, but I don't expect it to be as dense as what we had yesterday morning. So a little bit in the morning tomorrow, warm and humid on your Friday, then a cooler fall like weekend. We'll talk about how much temperatures drop with our cold front, how long the humidity is going to be swept away and your detailed eclipse cloud cover forecast in a bit. Thank you, Adam. Let's check out traffic right now. Let's go to 410 in Perrin Bidal and there is a backup. I believe we're looking at the eastbound lanes of 410 in Perrin Bidal. You can see both the access road and 410 itself backed up. Still ahead, it's a life-saving tool in the fight against breast cancer, but only if people are able to get them. How the cost of mammograms could cost some patients important treatment and time. Here's a look at what we're working on for the news at six. The family of a woman found dead inside a storage bin last year say they're angry the DA's office hasn't kept them in the loop. They say they weren't even told by the DA that the suspects in the case were in court and had been granted plea deals. In fact, it wasn't until they read about it on the KSAT website did they even find out their outrage at six.
This weekend, San Antonio will have its first fentanyl walk in memory of the lives changed and destroyed by the drug epidemic. Mothers who lost their children planned this event. We're going to listen about how they came together to make it happen. Plus, an annulus is a fancy word for donut. Have you ever wondered why it's called an annular eclipse? You're going to find out. A new case that explains breaks down what it is, what's going to happen in the skies over South Texas on Saturday morning, but also why looking at the ground could give you a unique view of one of the world's most important moments. It's all that and more coming up today on the News at Six. Mammograms are an important tool used to screen for breast cancer, but as Justin Finch reports, the costs may deter some people from returning for follow up exams, and those could be life saving. The CDC recommends women between the ages of 50 to 74 years should get a mammogram every two years. And for most women over the age of 40, insurance covers the cost of the initial screening. But there often are costs for additional tests and procedures if a mammogram shows a possible abnormality. Researchers at the Neiman Health Policy Institute in a report published in JAMA looked at the experience of more than 200,000 women with commercial and Medicare Advantage plans who had a mammogram in 2016. They found that patients with higher out-of-pocket costs tended to not come back for follow-ups. Doctors warn skipping a mammogram can be dangerous, but researchers emphasize that financial barriers remain for many women seeking help. And they encourage policymakers to consider whether follow-up exams should be fully covered by insurance. If cost is an issue for you, talk to your doctor. There might be programs that can help. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Looking outside with live cam, boy, is this a different picture from what we had this morning. It's like a completely different day, Adam. Yeah, it is. It was uh, damp and dreary with reduced visibility and fog earlier today. Now we've cleared out. We have the sunshine and the corresponding warmth. And speaking of warmth, take a look at tomorrow. 91 degrees is what we're expecting for our high temperatures. So well above average for this time of year and sticky and humid, just like the humidity you feel out there right now. That all changes because a cold front's going to hit late on Friday. That's going to reset our temperatures back below average Saturday about 78 the high Sunday up to 80 degrees and we'll be right near 80 degrees for high temperatures behind the cold front morning lows will be of course noticeably cooler as well we'll get to those in a moment first of all you see the satellite imagery today and those low clouds really held tight for hours they finally lifted and broke up a bit but just by looking at the temperatures on the map you can see where the clouds really stuck around and lingered the longest. Bernie 79 along with Comfort and Kerrville. Lost Maples right now at 73 degrees. Meanwhile, where we saw more sunshine, Del Rio at 90, Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs at 88, and Catula 89 right now. We've got the sunshine, so we've boosted up to 85 at the moment here in San Antonio. We could still rise another degree or so before the sun sets. Dew point is 67. That's a key here. Not only do you feel the mugginess, but that's going to lead to, I think, some patchy fog again tomorrow morning. Not as dense and as problematic as what we had earlier today, but noticeable, and some of you may run into it for the morning morning commute. Notice those dew points well into the 60s, even near 70 degrees. It's that flow off the Gulf of Mexico that's boosting our mugginess out there and maintaining it right now. However, with the cold front, we get a north wind and that changes everything. Not tomorrow, but for first thing Saturday morning. Notice our dew point future cast during the day tomorrow. Still dew points near 70 and then by tomorrow night, by midnight, the drier air hits and really sweeps away the humidity, especially by sunrise Saturday morning. So you're not even going to have a hint of mugginess in the air this weekend and through most of next week. Actually, it's going to be very crisp and fall like air, which is going to lead to some cooler mornings down in the lower 50s, possibly in the days ahead. Here's a look at our cold front right now off just creeping into North Texas. A lot of precipitation around it, though I don't think we're going to get in on any of the rain. This is going to be a dry frontal passage. Let's fast forward to right behind the front Saturday morning. I am anticipating before the eclipse begins 
some lingering clouds in our area, not exactly obscuring the sky completely, but some lingering clouds. We get to eclipse time once it begins and you see the path right here in these lines and we'll still have, I think, some patchy clouds left around closer to the border, especially. But I think we'll have pretty good viewing in and around San Antonio. A closer look at that. We'll spend more time of it on it coming up at six o'clock. 71 in the morning, 91 in the afternoon tomorrow. And I mentioned those cooler mornings. Look at that down to 53 by Monday and Tuesday. Back to feel and fall like this weekend. Oh, yeah. Really nice day on Saturday. All right. Are the Spurs back to full strength tonight? Uh, they play what? Tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Yes, Sorry. tomorrow night. And Jeremy Sohan is set to return, which is pretty cool, right? Yeah, I mean, from his colorful hair to his game, he's fun to watch, and he is set to return tomorrow night. Plus, the Astros are just blown away by their latest accomplishment coming up. I'm 100%, so 110%, so yeah. Jeremy Sohan is healthy and excited to return in Big Board Sports. For our second year forward, Jeremy Sohan is set to make his preseason debut tomorrow night at home against the Miami Heat. He's been out due to soreness. Now, last season, he missed the final nine games with a sore knee. He also sat out summer league, but he's set to make his return, which will certainly please Spurs fans Friday night. As a rookie, he played in 56 games and averaged 11 points per contest. He says it's definitely nice to have one year of NBA experience on his resume. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I know the ropes 100%. I'm still young. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm trying to get as much information I can from, you know, everyone in the past here, you know, everyone, the coaches, current players as well. Um, so, you know, I feel like in life and, you know, just as a basketball player, it's all about, you know, growing and learning. So um, as I'm going to be a student of the game. So, yeah. Coming up at 6, Sohan talks about his excitement to get on the court and play. Mary Rominger has the story. The Houston Astros did their part to set up the Lone Star State Showdown for the American League Championship. The Astros beat the Twins 3-2 in Game 4 yesterday to win the ALDS three games to one. That means they are heading to the ALCS for the seventh straight season, the longest stretch in ALCS history. That's special. I mean, I, I know that we're going to probably look back at this and even know how more special this is, but, like, that's special. Uh, you don't take that for granted ever. Uh, and uh, it's a contribute to a lot of guys that work hard every day in this locker room, and, and they deserve it. And really just to embrace that this is the seventh time in a row. I mean, it's just how, how incredible is that uh, to be a part of this run for most of those years? Um, you know, I, I think no matter how long you've been around the game, uh, it, it, you know, you have to take a step back and realize how special that is. Here's the ALCS schedule between Texas and Houston. Game one is Sunday night at 715. Game two is Monday afternoon at 337. Both those games are in Houston and the series will shift to Arlington. Game three is Wednesday night at 703. Game four is Thursday night at 703. Game five, if necessary, will go down on Friday, October 20th in Arlington. Now this is a best of seven series. The Astros will host games six and seven if they are needed. We'll be right back after the break. I think if you plan on viewing the eclipse, you'll have the best viewing in the hill country and even locally. I'm going to get into more on why coming up at six o'clock. 91 tomorrow, back near 80 for highs this weekend through next week and crisp fall like mornings in the 50s. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News Up next. See you back here at 6.